Well, um, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wahawakachodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Irazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada. And pretty much this lesson is going to be titled as Jacob Trouble. Because Jacob's trouble is coming. And we have to go through Jacob's trouble first before we can be saved. Before the Lord can come back, we have to go through Jacob's trouble. And the hour of temptation is upon us, which you see right here in this picture. This is the hour of temptation, which is also a part of Jacob's trouble. So before the Lord can come back, we have to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. Because you have a lot of Israelite groups or Israelite individuals. They're pushing false doctrines and they're teaching that either we are already in Jacob trouble or we're going to be saved before Jacob trouble. Or they're teaching that Jacob trouble is only going to come upon the heathen nations and not Israel. And all of those scenarios that I just said are all incorrect. We have to go through Jacob's trouble first before we can be saved. That's what makes it Jacob's trouble. All right. Jacob's trouble is going to be the infirmities and afflictions upon the Israelites. All right. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians. That's Jacob's trouble. And Lord willing... This lesson is edifying. First Thessalonians 5 and 3. It says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And what is the sudden destruction? The inflation, right? The things that's going to take place. The global economic collapse, right? The end of the dollar. The digital currency, which is going to lead to the MOTB, right? The affliction. The uncivil arrest, right? The NWO, all of these things is all going to take place. Then sudden and destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And that word travail means to suffer pain or painful efforts. So the same as a woman is in travail with a child, right? She's due to have a baby. She goes through those birth pains. Now, these birth pains that's going to come in the time of Jacob's trouble which right now we're in those birth pains, which are those those trials and tribulations that are coming. And all of us have to go through Jacob's trouble first. We all have to go through Jacob's trouble first before we can be saved. And these are those birth pains which are going to come. And guess what? You're not going to be able to escape it. All right. None of us is going to be able to escape it. We have to go through it first before we can be saved. All right. It says, and they shall not escape. See, so the hour of temptation, which is leading into Jacob's trouble, is coming upon the Israelites. And if you're a person that have not repented and have not came out of, way, out of the ways of this society, you're going to be a messed up individual in that time. If you've been living your life like it's golden, you've been having everything going your way, everything has just been perfect for you in this society, you're going to be a messed up individual in Jacob Trouble because you're not going to be used to going through the things that are going to come upon this place. Daniel 12 and 1. It says, and that it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Who's Michael? Michael the Archangel. It says the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Talking about the Israelites. Right. And there shall be a time of trouble. 
See, so we have to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. No, we're not already in Jacob trouble. No, we're not going to be saved before Jacob trouble. And no, Jacob trouble is not going to just be on the heathen nations only and not the Israelites. All of those are false doctrines. We have to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. And I'm reading it right here. And there shall be a time of trouble. So we have to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. Many of us are going to be put to death in that time of Jacob trouble. Many of us is going to lose the faith and give in to that MOTB. And I pray that we are not those individuals. But there's going to be a lot of Judas Iscariots in that time that's going to betray their own brethren. They're going to betray them. You're going to have a lot of Judas Iscariots in that time. They're going to give up and give in to the system, the beast system. And we pray that we are not those individuals. It says such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Because the time that we're coming into is going to be worse than any time period in history. Ain't going to be no underground railroads. Ain't going to be no Harriet Tubman's helping you to escape this. This is going to be a global thing. Ain't going to be no going south or going going north to escape this. This is going to be a global. You ain't going to be able to escape this. It says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. And that's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. But guess what? We still have to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. That's the main point. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Because not every single Israelite is going to be saved either. Two thirds of our people have to be put to death according to Zechariah 13 and 8. Not every single Israelite is going to be saved. Only the elect is going to be saved, which we're hoping to be. Jeremiah 30 and 5, for thus saith the Lord. Anytime you see Lord in caps, that's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, which goes into H3068, which is Yahweh, right? Yah means he. Yah goes into the Hebrew of H3050, which is Yah, which means he. Hawa goes into the goes into the Hebrew grammar of H1933. Also in the etymology of H1933, it goes into H1961, which goes to Hawa, which means to be exists he is. Bahashem. Ba goes into the Hebrew H uh H935, which is Ba, which means to go or to come, coming in. Ha goes into the Hebrew of uh h i 88 6.1 which means the and sham that goes into h 8034 which is sham which means name hawashai yeah hawashai yeah means he h 3050 hawashai that goes into h 3067 right which means um savior or deliverer that's the true name of the only begotten son. So when you read Jeremiah 30 and verse 5, that says, For thus saith the Lord, that's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. Because we are not we're not in the time of peace. There's a lot of rumors of wars. There's a lot of havoc that's going on on the earth. There's a lot of triumphs. And disasters that's going on, on amongst the earth. So we're not in a time of peace. We are literally in a time of fear. We're in the last days. The end of age. The end of Esau's rulership. Verse 6. As It says, As ye know, as ye now, and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Remember, we read that in First Thessalonians 5 and 3. That travailing that goes into pain or painful, suffer pain or painful efforts. And a man doesn't travail with child. A woman travails, right? She goes through those birth pains. It says, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his lines as a woman in travail? See, and all faces are turned into paleness. And that paleness, it means faint. All right, feeble, weak. Because it ain't going to matter about your muscles. It ain't going to matter about that. You could be hitting 275, 10 reps. That's not going to be able to save you if you don't have your Haobashimashai with you. It ain't going to matter about that. It doesn't matter. It ain't going to matter if you're taking creatine, you taking fucking steroids. That's not going to help you if you ain't got your Haobashimashai with you. Your maximum of muscle isn't going to save you. 
Your guns is not going to save you. Faith is what's going to save you. Verse 7. Alas, for the day is great so that none is like it. Because the time that we're coming into again is going to be worse than any particular time period that you can name in the history. Worse than any time. This is going to be a global thing. It says it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's the time we're coming into. The hour of temptation. Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. And he, that's meaning that he should be saved out of it. That's talking about the elect. But again, the elect is going to be delivered. But we still have to go through Jacob's trouble first before we can be saved. So there you go. Jacob trouble, we have to go through it first before we can be saved. Second Edra 1670, for there shall be in every place and in and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Verse 71, they shall be like mad men, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. And this is going into the civil and unrest. You're going to have a lot of crime increasing on the earth. Crime is going to go up. Ain't going to be no more calling 911 as you do today right now. 911 is going to go out of business in that time. Ain't going to be no 911 in the time of Jacob Trouble. Verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods, right? Civil and arrest. It's going to be cannibalism. It's going to be a lot of things going on on earth. Ain't going to be no food, no water, none of that stuff in that time. No electricity, none of that stuff in that time. It's going to be total mayhem. Verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Because you're going to even have betrayal of, of friends. Your own friends is going to betray you. Even your own family is going to betray you. You ain't going to be able to trust nobody in that time. Verse, verse 73, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Because you individually is going to be tried on your faith. This is why the elders and apostles of Great Millstone always say we are to ask the Lord to increase us in the faith. All right. The laws can't save you. Faith is what's going to save you. You're going to be tried. You're going to be put in a lot of different scenarios. Many of us is going to be put in different scenarios. All right. We're going to go through our own um, um, afflictions and trials and tribulations individually. Yeah, individually. This is uh, 2nd Edris 15. Eight hundred five eight eight two. I'm going to call them back. It's like you. 2nd Edris 15 and 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. See, this is giving you a warning or destruction. Verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hand. That's going into the civil unrest. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men. And that word sedition means to revolt, come up against. All right, rebel, right? Among men invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the and the curse of their actions shall stand in their power. This is going into the civil unrest because you're gonna have people that's gonna rebel against the authorities here. Everybody's not gonna comply to the system. Everybody's not gonna comply to America's regulations when martial law is established. They're gonna be against that, right? Verse 17. So that's gonna lead into what? Martial law, verse 17, a man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able. There's going to be total lockdown on the city, just like in 2020 when it was a pandemic, but it's going to be way worse than that in that time. Verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid because of the things that's going to be on upon the earth. Crime is going to increase. It's going to be cannibalism. It's going to be killing. It's going to be raping. Women are going to be getting raped. I'm not saying I'm going to do that. But that's the time we're going to be into. Crime is going to increase. There's going to be a lot of things going on. Sex trafficking, cannibalism, right? Killing, all of that. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, right? And a sword can be anything. A baseball bat with nails, a gun, a slingshot, whatever you want to call it. A machete, nunchucks, size, katana swords. Anything that they create is considered a sword. Right. It says and spoil their goods. Take everything you got. You got people right now stacking up on foods, getting prepared for uh, getting survival gear. Well, that's not going to help you. You're still going to wind up getting robbed because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Everybody's going to have the mindset of every man for themselves in that time. All right. So it's going to be a lot of mayhem going on. 
So, wait, man, I just want to do a quick hit. Lord willing, that's is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praise to Yahweh Bashim Ashai Bashim Akakodash and double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will well teach well. Lord willing, that's what is edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.